This training tutorial will be covering advanced data formatting rules and their generation using 123Scan2. The topics I'll be covering in particular are what is an advanced data formatting rule, the most commonly requested ADF rules, I'll give you a hands-on demo with 123Scan2, and how to access the library of advanced data formatting rules within the utility. So our first question, what is an ADF rule? ADF is a means of customizing data before it's transmitted to the host system. So basically, your scan data is edited to suit your specific requirements as you programmed them into the ADF rule before it's transmitted to the host. So let me give you two examples of what different ADF rules can do for you. In example one, you have a code 39 that's seven digits long. But let's say that your host system is a legacy system and it requires an enter key be supplied between each barcode scan. Otherwise, it's going to stay on the same screen. You can program your scanner through an ADF rule to say if it's a code 39 and it's seven digits long, append an enter so that when the data is scanned, it sticks an enter on it and sends the data and the enter key to your host system. Or an example too, let's say that you have a code 128 and it used to be just five digits long. Your vendor has added an additional digit to the beginning of the barcode and four on the end. You can program through your scanner an ADF rule that will say if it's a code 128 and it's 10 digits long, strip the first digit, send the next five, send an enter key, and strip the rest of the digits out. And now to the hands-on demo. If you have a USB scanner connected, click on this sequence of buttons to create a configuration file. Once you're in the wizard to create a configuration file, let's name the configuration file. Then select the screen to modify data. From this screen, you have the ability to add an ADF rule to your configuration file. The two most commonly requested types of ADF rule are append an enter key and append a tab key. Both of these transmit your data and then either append an enter or a tab key at the end of the data as it's transmitted to the host. If you're a power user, 123Scan2 provides you the ability to generate your own ADF rule. Simply click on Program Complex Data Modification and select the Advanced Data Formatting button. Click Create a New Rule. Before we go any further, let's take a look at the data we're going to modify. To do this, click on Data View, select your scanner, click Data Viewer, and we're going to select USB OPAS mode. And as you can see, we scanned a code 39. It's eight characters long, and the scanned output is AG022935. Now let's exit out of this window. Let's take a look at the goal of the ADF rule. You see the before and after data. Basically what we've done is we've skipped over the beginning set of data, transmitted the rest, sent an enter key, gone back to the beginning set of data, and then sent it plus a tab key. And one of the things we want to be very particular about is we're going to make this rule such that it only applies to code 39s that are eight digits long that start with the letters AG. In the beginning of the string, AG has to start at position one of the digits in the barcode. So let's start programming our ADF rule. First, click on the tab that corresponds to the name of the configuration file. In this case, ADF rule one. Let's start the process of generating an ADF rule by naming it. Code 39, AG. Now we'll also make sure that this only applies to Code 39 symbologies. And remember how I said we'd make sure that of the Code 39s, it'll only apply to barcodes that are a certain length. So we'll set the length to eight digits. and it'll have a certain string in it. It'll have the string AG. And it won't just be a string AG at any length. It'll have to be at the first digit in the barcode. So let's start programming the actions. First, we'll add the first action, which is skip. And we're going to skip ahead two. We'll add the next action. Now that we've skipped the A and G, we're going to send all that remains.
and now we're going to send another value. We're going to send an enter. We're going to add another action now and go back and send the AG. So we're going to skip to start. And now we're going to send the A and G, which is send next two digits. And now we're going to send a value, which is the tab. And now that we've finished creating our ADF rule, we're going to save our rule to our ADF library by clicking on the plus sign here that's in green. Your rule has been added to your library. Now if you wanted to add a second rule into here, let's say we wanted to do that, we can add a rule from the library. This is our library. Let's say we wanted to append an, a tab. Now the second rule has been added here. Now if we want to delete this rule, we can remove the rule. Now that we're done creating our ADF rule, let's go ahead and save it, which is contained within the configuration file to our computer. So save file to computer. It's automatically named and saved in a pre-specified location. And now let's go ahead and load it electronically to our scanner. Now we're done. The file's been electronically loaded to the scanner. And now to confirm to ourselves that everything's working right, let's go to the data viewer and look at the output. This time we're going to go in hid keyboard because it shows hidden characters. And looking at the scan data, it's been transmitted with all the digits first, a carriage return line feed, which is the same as an enter, is appended to it, AG is then sent, and then a tab. Now, if you click on this show non-printable characters, which is clicked right now, so it is showing them, you can also hide them. And for power users, if you want direct access to the ADF library, go to Tools, Data Formatting Library. And from here, you can take a look at all the ADF rules you've saved. You can import rules, export rules, and delete rules. And this concludes the tutorial on advanced data formatting rules using 123Scan2.